Okay, so next we're going to talk about thermal resistances. And um, the idea with thermal resistances is they give us this tool that we can use to um, put different heat transfer mechanisms onto equal footing. So then we can um, compare them. Um, we can do problems that have a whole bunch of things going on. And, and mostly we can use them to come to some level of understanding of what's important and what's not. So <clears throat> here's the final result of the 1D steady state conduction problem that we've been working on. This is a cylindrical shell. We have the geometry, and we have you know the two temperatures, and then we have the conductivity of the material. And under these conditions, uh, we derived the temperature distribution, which was interesting, but the more interesting thing was the heat transfer rate. So the heat transfer rate is given by this equation um, right here. And it'd be nice to um, record this as a thermal resistance so that we can use it to compare to other thermal resistances. And like I said, we can then use it um, in situations in you know kind of in real life to, to understand whether the conduction is important or it's not important uh, relative to other things that are going on so thermal resistances <clears throat> are really just uh, an analog to any other kind of resistance right so in every different um, uh, engineering discipline you're gonna find that there are flows that are driven by potentials Right? The most common thing that we think about is um, a current that's driven by differences in voltage. So that would be uh, an electrical circuit like this. And we have then an electrical resistance that resists the, the current flow between these two voltages. Right? And um, you know, the resistance equation is then that the current is equal to the, the, the change in voltage, right, the, the voltage potential that's driving that current divided by the electrical resistance. And at least some of us have, uh, you know, learned electrical circuits pretty well if you had a circuits class and therefore, you know, these resistance concepts become pretty, um, pretty easy to, to, to think about. And if you didn't have a very good circuits class, maybe it's not as helpful. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> this is our, our electrical resistance. The thermal resistance is just an analog of this, but it recognizes that if you're talking about heat transfer, um, the potential that drives heat transfer is not voltage, but rather temperature, right? So you have temperature difference that's driving, instead of current, a heat transfer rate. And then the resistance is a thermal resistance that is sort of standing in the way of the of the of the heat transfer rate, right? We have a, a, a temperature potential and it's trying to drive current through this resistor. If I have a big resistor, I'm gonna have a small current because it's you know difficult to squeeze the current through this resistance. If I have a small resistor, I'll have a, a much bigger current, right? So same thing as an electrical resistance over here. If I have an open circuit, electric, an electrical open circuit, that's an infinite resistance that says that there is no current flowing between these two things. If I have an open circuit thermal resistance, that's an infinite resistance. It says that you know there is no heat transfer flowing between these two surfaces or nodes. If I have a, a closed circuit or a short circuit, that's a, that's a zero or a very small resistance. That says I'm going to get a lot of current, right? Maybe a dangerous amount of current. Same thing over here. If I have a zero thermal resistance, this is I'm going to get an enormous heat transfer rate uh, if there's even any temperature difference between these nodes. So you know, analogous concepts, <clears throat> this thermal resistance here, first of all, if you look at it, it must have units of, well, if this is watts over here and these are Kelvin, this must have units of um, Kelvin per watt, right? Kelvin per watt. And that's kind of how you can actually think about um, Think about what a thermal resistance is. Is you know if I'm if I'm uh, going to get one watt of heat transfer through that thermal resistance, it tells me how many Kelvin I have to put across it, right? How many degrees Kelvin I have to put across it. <clears throat> so we were just looking at this equation here, which was a very specific situation, right? But it looks like a resistance equation, right? I have a heat transfer difference. Uh, I'm sorry, a heat transfer rate. It's being driven by a temperature difference across the material, right, from the inside to the outside. And uh, this thing right here then must play the role of a thermal resistance. So the inverse of this thing uh, is a thermal resistance. And this is actually one of several thermal resistances that we 
should just kind of write down and know, right? This is the thermal resistance uh, to conduction, radial conduction through a cylindrical shell. It should actually make a little bit of sense if you look at it, right? If I have uh, my thermal resistance is the inverse of this thing, well, then um, if I uh, make the conductivity of this thing really high, what does that do to my thermal resistance? It's going to make it really small. If I make the length really long, it's going to make my resistance really small. Right? These are all things that, that actually should make it easier to transfer energy through my shell. And, you know, indeed, they make the thermal resistance smaller. If I make the, the, the cylinder thinner, so R out and R in become closer together, it makes my resistance smaller. So we're going to record the thermal resistance in a, in a place where we can get to it really quickly. Right? We can use it. Um, here's the table that's in your book. And this is the second row. This is the thermal resistance to radial heat transfer through a cylindrical shell. Right? There's some other uh, conduction resistances that you would derive in exactly the same way that we just derived this one. Slightly different differential equation, but the steps are the same. If you have um, a plain wall, so the area doesn't change, then you would get this resistance. It would be the length divided by the conductivity of the material and the uh, cross-sectional area available for heat transfer. We'll use this one a lot, actually. We'll use this resistance to estimate resistances uh, due to conduction um, in situations where none of these things are exactly right. But if we can estimate how far does the heat have to travel and what's the area it has available to it, we can use this resistance formula to estimate order of magnitude, how big is the conduction resistance, right? This is uh, a sphere, so a spherical shell with an inner radius and an outer radius. This is the um, conduction uh, resistance to heat transfer through that cylindrical shell, or I'm sorry, spherical shell. <clears throat> you can see there's some other phenomena that we need to think about. Um, so we talked, uh, I guess, last time about um, other mechanisms of heat transfer, right? one being radiation, uh, another, I guess in air quotes, mechanism being convection. It's not really a different mechanism, but it's definitely a different um, situation. So those uh, situations can be represented approximately with thermal resistances. Uh, and then there's another thing called the contact resistance that we should talk about. So let's talk about first uh, convection. So convection is this um, situation where we have a surface of some type um, at some temperature and it's exposed to the, a, a fluid um, and the fluid uh, is, is probably moving <clears throat> and so um, the fluid is at some free stream temperature so far away from the surface that the fluid temperature is T infinity you know if the surface temperature and the fluid temperature are different there's going to be a heat transfer from the surface to the fluid and that's called convection right that's our convection heat transfer convection characterizes the um, thermal uh, behavior or the, the thermal um, connection between a surface and and a flowing fluid right and we uh, represent that heat transfer rate with, with what is called Newton's law of cooling over here it says that the rate of heat transfer due to convection is uh, this heat transfer coefficient h bar times the surface area exposed to the fluid so this is the surface area exposed to the fluid times Ts minus T infinity so this temperature difference between the surface and the fluid temperature. And if you look at this for a second, you, you, you see that, yeah, you know, this is another resistance equation. I have a heat transfer rate, and it's being driven by a temperature difference. And then this guy right here is playing the role of uh, a thermal resistance, right? So the thermal resistance due to convection must be 1 over h bar times a sub s. h bar has units of watts per meter squared Kelvin. Right, and you could, should be able to figure that out just by looking at the units of this equation. Um, H bar, this heat transfer coefficient is a complicated sort of beast, right? We are going to spend kind of a lot of time trying to understand, you know, what it really means, where it comes from, how to estimate it, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, in the end, you can use it in this resistance equation uh, if, you can, if you can come up with some estimate of it. <clears throat> Uh, radiation. Uh, radiation is uh, another topic that we're going to spend kind of a lot of time on. Um, you know, it, radiation is is basically the energy transfer, at least as far as we're concerned, it's the energy transfer between different 
surfaces that are at different temperatures, right? And you know, you can have some pretty complicated radiation problems where you have all kinds of different surfaces, you know, that are oriented in different ways. Um, and we'll spend, you know, a good couple, three weeks at the end of the class talking about uh, how to estimate uh, radiation heat transfer in complicated situations. But uh, in the very simple situation where you have a single surface, so this is a single surface at some temperature, and it's interacting with surroundings that are all at some other temperature, well, then radiation is pretty simple. And you get this very simple equation right here, which says that the radiation heat transfer is equal to the surface area times sigma times epsilon times the surface temperature to the fourth power minus the surrounding temperature to the fourth power. All right, so let's go through this, uh, I guess, term by term. This uh, surface area is the surface area that is, you know, doing the radiating, so that makes sense. Sigma is Stefan Boltzmann's constant, so that's uh, 5.67 times 10 to the minus eighth watts uh, per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth. It's a natural constant. It never changes. Um, it's almost the only natural constant I can remember because it's 5, 6, 7, 8, right? 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8th. Um, <clears throat> epsilon is the emissivity of the surface. Um, that is uh, a surface characteristic that we'll come back to and talk about. It's uh, an interesting definition in that it's... Uh, how this surface is behaving relative to a black body, which is this nice limit. Um, but for now, just know that it's a dimensionless number that has to be between 0 and 1, right? Uh, the closer you get to 1, the more your surface is absorbing everything and reflecting not very much. The closer you get to 0, the more your surface doesn't absorb much and it reflects everything, right? Okay, so <clears throat> this is our radiation heat transfer equation. You know, at first glance, it really doesn't look like a resistance equation, right? I have here uh, a heat transfer rate, uh, but instead of being driven by temperature difference, it's actually being driven by the difference in two temperatures to the fourth power. And I guess hopefully it's obvious these are absolute temperatures to the fourth power. Um, so that kind of wrecks the analogy between, um, you know, the other thermal resistances. But we can get it back at least approximately if we take this temperature difference to the fourth power so ts to the fourth minus t surroundings to the fourth and we just expand it twice right so this ts to the fourth minus t surroundings to the fourth is ts squared plus t surrounding squared times ts squared minus t surrounding squared and if i expand that again i get ts squared plus t surrounding squared times ts plus t surroundings times Ts minus T surrounding. So you know, here I'm back to something that at least looks like a resistance equation. I have the resistance, I'm sorry, I have the rate of heat transfer due to radiation that is being driven by this temperature difference. And then this big mess right here must be the inverse of the uh, radiation uh, thermal resistance. And uh, you know, obviously this radiation thermal resistance is itself a function of temperature. Right, so this resistance is a function of temperature um, because the temperatures uh, appear in here. Um, but actually, you know, if you think about it, the heat transfer coefficient was a function of temperature. All these conductivities were functions of temperature. So none of these, um, you know, were truly linear equations. They they all um, had buried in them uh, some temperature dependence that we're just assuming is you know of second order. Right, so. Uh, same thing here. These temperatures are absolute temperatures, and so for the most part, you know, in the world where we live in, where absolute temperatures are 300 Kelvin to 350 Kelvin, these temperatures aren't really um, changing very much, at least on an absolute basis, right? So it's not that strong of a function of temperature. Um, in fact, you can make use of that observation to... Um, come up with a radiation resistance that's a simplified version of this, right? If you just look at these temperatures, so here I have the surface temperature and the surrounding temperature, surface temperature, surrounding temperature. On an absolute basis, these guys probably aren't that different from one another. And so I can approximate this term right here as just four times the average temperature cubed, right? This is, this is going to be uh, two times the average temperature squared, at least approximately. This is going to be two times the average temperature so 2 times the average temperature squared times 2 times the average temperature is 4 times the average temperature cubed. And that's a nice way of approximately calculating uh, this radiation 
resistance. You know, this is exactly right. This is approximately right.